Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, The Dark Side of Being Rejected Unwanted. The Dark Side of Being Rejected Unwanted. Somewhere in this world, someone does want a person who has been rejected or unwanted, but not so that they can live their lives the way they see fit. The group or the person is not interested in setting up your life so that it is most comfortable for you. Remember, this is the dark side of being rejected, unwanted. Instead, what can we do with this individual who was unwanted from birth? I'm going to use the example of the Truman Show because... This is going to resonate really well, this message, with those who are familiar with The Truman Show. So if you haven't watched The Truman Show, you might want to watch that. It's an old movie that premiered back in Los Angeles on June 1st, 1998. Okay. And it received all sorts of nominations, 71st Academy Awards, 50, 56th Globin or Golden Globe Awards, the 52nd British Academy Film Awards, and the 25th Saturn Awards, okay? The Truman Show, this was a science fiction, psychological comedy drama. And that year, in 1998, there was a lot of talk going on about our lives being nothing more than like the Truman Show, okay? It's interesting how movies, oh, it's just a movie, is really someone or group's reality. Rejected, unwanted. The demonic already put a stamp on your forehead. You may say things and do things that tell the psychologist, the teacher, the doctor, your spouse, or even your child that, You were rejected from birth. Someone unpacks you and they find that every decision that you made in your lifetime was about being accepted, being wanted. And even when you made these decisions that you thought were in your best interest, someone came along and they had their thoughts and their ideas and their blueprint in terms of what you could do for them. So they basically took advantage of the fact that you were rejected and unwanted. Now, this message is not for everyone, like many of the messages that I have, but there is a segment of the populace who was taken advantage of because of the rejection that you may have told everyone or once again, your decisions, the way you behave, the way you converse as, oh yeah, that one has experienced lots of rejection, unwanted from birth. We got ourselves a winner. You see the movie where Truman Burbank doesn't realize that he is a part of the Truman show. He was unwanted. Okay. So that left him wide open for others to think of something that could benefit them. How about a reality television program? Can I tell you that there was a lot of that? And even now there are still reality shows, but are they really reality? And some of you all who have been extras or participated in these various projects, or you knew someone, you know that there is some scripts involved. However, we can create a reality that someone lives in to the point where some individuals start to blend the two lines of reality and no, this is fictional. This isn't real. A reality television program that was filmed 24-7 in that movie. There were a lot of individuals and a lot of cameras. And not only that, 
the show was broadcasted worldwide. Now, there's a spoiler that I'm going to give you. Basically, at some point, Truman realizes, oh, wait a minute. I am not who I think I am. That this is just one big show. So the reality was the real emotions and the things that he was going through that the audience could relate to. This is pretty much how the reality shows have been that you've watched. And some people will go, well, I don't understand though. Why is it that some of these reality show couples end up breaking up? Because you no longer have the script. You no longer have people to control the narrative around you. You don't have all of the bells, the whistles, the help, the finances and everything to paint the picture that we, the audience, would like to see. Which is the happy, the happy, the happy. But these people were never really meant to be. Or these people had a lot of issues going in. And so the reality show brought out all of their dirty laundry. And then, of course, you throw in maybe a few psychologists that are on the set. And they start to unpack them. And they realize that I was rejected a long time ago had a lot of issues a long time ago and all this person was was just a character in my show in my movie can somebody put their hand up that marriage that you had <laughs> a long time ago that eventually fizzled out and now wait a minute this is not the all oh, you know crushes and love oh you know, my first love, uh, people grow, right? So he's not fitting your narrative any longer. You have matured while some folks have what? Mm, remain stagnant. And so when people no longer fit our narrative, we do what? We reject them. So it wasn't enough that some individuals experienced rejection during a time when somebody just did not want a baby we were having a good time that was all it wasn't supposed to lead to all of this other stuff but it did but you know hey the healthy thing to do is to be there for the child right to train up a child to do the right thing we all recognize that all of us you know we went through our share of issues getting in you know coming into this world but we're here now and so we're just going to take lemons and turn them into lemonade, right? Okay. So Truman, this unwanted baby, right? Who grows up in a hometown called Sea Haven Island. He's actually inside this enormous dome. Okay, and there's these crew members and actors. Where do we see this sort of thing again show up? Now, that was 1998 when that movie came out. In 2023 with Ben Affleck's Hypnotic. This is a world that he is in that is controlled. Certain aspects of his mind controlled so that he would perform so that he could be what they wanted him to be because he held a secret okay and that secret that he held was involving a child his child and he didn't want his child to be a part of the matrix that they had designed that they had created we're going to blow this thing up we're going to take these people out you're not going to play with my life like this and for some of these people behind the scenes i can almost guess that they had a falling out about you guys are not going to have any more control over our lives like you are i don't care rewrite it reword it you created a lot of other stories based on us you're going to change the narrative on this one because we're not allowing more children to be a part of this protect the children protect the children until they don't protect the children and the children are part of the project and you sign the contract and if we have to hmm, quietly remove you, we will. Matter of fact, the narrative could be, oh, the mother who is on her deathbed, surrounded by her daughters. Oh, I'm seeing this in a spiritual realm. And that's a part of 
the storyline, which is going to increase a whole lot of views by design. Couldn't just pass away gracefully or no, no, no. We've got to make this happen sooner rather than later because we've got a lot of money on the line and we got to have another show and another one and another one. This is a generational thing for all of us. We're all going to make money. So the human being is rejected. Don't like you very much, but what is accepted is the narrative involving the human being and the populace is totally in support of this sort of thing. Now, someone goes, since this is a faith-based channel and you tend to talk about the spirit, how does this all impact us in the spiritual realm? Well, you see, God has his narrative. It's very easy for you to understand for some, not for all, when it comes to the humans and their narratives. Oh, I can figure this out. I know what's going to happen. They're just brainwashing us to get us ready for the next natural disaster. Uh-huh. Did you see those little um <laughs> little Easter eggs, so to speak, that they have in that little movie? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we know what that is. See, you know what that is, right? Okay. And prepping us for, you know, all these different couples and, you know, interracial couples, gay couples, you know, every type of couple under the sun, you know, prepping us for how to deal with people who are overweight and, you know, how to deal with people who have eating disorders and how to deal with the average Joe Schmo. Well, you know, all of those old movies back in the day, if you just want average, <laughs> right? But the narrative of what those characters in all of those movies experience somehow plays a part on your mind. So God in the spiritual realm goes, this narrative and that narrative is not going to fly. It's not going to co coexist with what I have called you to be, O oh son, O oh daughter. Yes, we've established the reality is the rejection took place. However, we are not going to do what so many other people do now that you've called me into your life. And that is to create a Truman Show type of lifestyle for you. You've already seen that. You already know what that is because you built up some of that. But when God gets involved, Lord Jesus, now there is no rejection. There is no narrative where I need to be accepted. And so come hell or high water, I'm going to be accepted. And we're just going to take on a worldly narrative. Who got one for me? And let's just make this happen. But can I tell you that that's what's going on on YouTube? That's what's going on out there in mainstream media. And these are believers. We already know about the worldly sinners, you know, drinking, acting up, acting like fools, all that. We see that time and time again. It's so dull. It's so boring. It's so same old, same old. But what is interesting is when the believer does this sort of thing, because now God goes, see, before you didn't have to be concerned, a wayward believer about rejection. Because I accepted you. I loved on you. But somebody goes, uh oh, sounds like past tense. Because man, woman, beast, child, they, what have you, gets to a point where they reject God. And so when you reject God, you push God out. And now you're left to be whoever, whatever. And a lot of people got a lot of complex, confusing, ridiculous, and downright damning type of narratives that they've created for themselves, which lead all those who they recruit, who they talk to on a regular basis, and all of that down a slippery slope right along with them. I wasn't troubled until I met him. I didn't have these weird thoughts until I got involved with her. I never experienced that type of rejection until I started getting involved with these people who they started talking to me about all of what their mamas and daddies had done to them and how they were rejected by everybody under the sun. And now I feel some kind of way. And so then you want to fit in, right? So you go off and you start talking about times in your life where you were rejected, but we don't hold on to that if you're just talking about it as a story as a life lesson but some individuals they are 
embracing it all. A lifestyle that's not even theirs. This is why you got to guard your heart, guard your mind, guard, guard your spirit. Oh, Heavenly Father, what have I done? I'm walking in the shadow of someone else. Oh, Heavenly Father, I've made this life so confusing for myself. I mean, I took all of the nuances of those individuals who have been rejected. I'm so far away. Yes, and so God is calling you back home. Misery loves company, doesn't it? Misery loves company. But back to the Truman Show. Hmm. You see, do people still accept you when you no longer perform for them? When you no longer give them? When you no longer are the center of attention that made them feel some kind of way? Or do they go off to some other YouTube channel? <laughs> do they up and divorce and then go off and find some new partner? Do they, come on, think of the times where somebody, they left you hanging, right? You weren't ready, so we went on without you. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're not tall enough. You're too short. Oh, you know, you don't talk a certain way. I thought that you were going to talk more ethnic, more street girl. And instead, where is this, you know, voice coming from? You see? You're too light or you, you're too dark or you're too white or you're too brown, or you're too whatever. Don't you just love all the rejection? No, you don't. Instead, what you do is you push back and then you create either a narrative that fits whoever you want to get in close to, get in with, or you say, forget everybody. I'm just going to be me. Hmm. And you're quite content with it, but some individuals are not. And so this is why they start going down that slippery slope of trying to impress people, trying to be a part of the crowd. Lord Jesus, help us all. Some of you all didn't expect that you were going to watch a Truman Show like movie through your children. When you start to see your children make decisions that are similar to what you made back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, or early 2000s, it hurts. This is where I'm at right now with one. I'm looking at some of the things that I did and I'm not happy. I did before Christ. I did before wisdom and good old-fashioned common sense. I did where my mother and my father raised their eyebrows and was wondering what's going on and to see your child do these things. And you say, but I said this and I did that and I taught them this and I taught them that and I gave them this example and I gave them that example, but, 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 you couldn't control the media. Sooner or later, the media was going to say something, do something that was gonna churn out what you did. And so what do we do when we can't control, when we can't put, you know, devices, safety devices on everything, because, you know, they get to a certain point where you can't put safety devices. See, there were a lot of safety devices that I used when they were younger. So they were brought up in this show that I created, a show that I watched. Yes, they were allowed to be themselves, but up to a certain extent, if being themselves was going to cause harm to a fellow sibling, then no, we're going to reject that part. That part, you're going to have to be reprogrammed to behave in a way that is not going to cause problems, not just for your brother, but for your child <laughs> listener or for you police officer or for you lawyer or for you come on doctor so the early programming I knew I had to get it right so that way when I send them off into the real world you're not going to talk about mine you can talk about somebody else who didn't want to put that time in but you're not going to talk about mine but then they do something right 
And it brings this story that we didn't want, that we didn't intend. And so now we got choices. Some of you all who are gamers, you know how story mode works. If I make this decision, this is going to lead my character down this path. But if I make this decision, can I say to some of you all, God got a story mode for some of you all. And that story mode is to take you away from the rejection, to take you away from the evil, from the dark, from the unsettling, and move you into a story mode where you come out the victor. The dark side of getting involved with someone or a group who are rejecting, who are pushing back, who are controlling, who are mean spirited when all you're trying to do is the right thing is destruction. It happened to Jesus in time. It happens to the believer. Sometimes believers have experienced a mental breakdown of sorts. Sometimes believers have had their share of on the cross, hung on the cross kind of experience. Believers have experienced losses. Somebody very close to you and now gone. I just wanted to live a lifestyle in my own way. But someone comes along or some group comes along and says, but no, 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 your mind is so much better for this. The opportunities that we can give you. And for some of you all, maybe at a workplace, for instance, you went along with the programming, with the manager, with the supervisor, with the business owners, with the investors, you went along with it. And it was great until somebody wanted you to steal. Until somebody wanted you to tell a lie. Until someone started freaking out and left you vulnerable where you said, I don't feel safe here any longer. Lord Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, I need you to intervene. This story mode that I'm in right now, I already see what's about to go down and I want out. And God says, okay, can I tell you that as crazy as this message might sound to some of you all, I prayed and I asked the Lord to change my story mode. Hallelujah. Because the story mode that I was in was causing me nothing but difficulty. That story mode that I was in, these are far too many obstacles. I'm supposed to work smarter, not harder. Lord Jesus, what are these people doing that they can go to work every day with a smile on their face? The Lord says, well, look at what they're eating. They're showing up. They got fruit. They're showing up. They got raisins, trail mix, granola. Okay. Somebody goes, well, how do we jump from to food? Certain foods can stimulate, energize the mind, right? When you have too much of something, right? For instance, a dessert, what does the mind do? It crashes. Well, when it crashes, it leads you open to making some foolish decisions. How many people have stuffed their faces during a holiday season and then their stomach hurt? And when their stomach was hurting, their mood went down and people really didn't want to be around you all like that. Or you didn't want to be around those people. The narrative changed, didn't it? You got up ready to go to that event and you felt good about it until you ate too much. Now everything is impacted because of how much you put in your mouth. <laughs> Jesus, help us all. And so the dark side is that now somebody is over the toilet vomiting. Drank too much, ate too much. The dark side is, is that um, somebody's got to spend some money that they didn't want to spend to replace some carpeting because we can't seem to get this odor out. Now, that is a digestible, simple, you know, example. But let's make this a little more complex. Let's talk about as the Lord leads, of course, let's talk about 
national and international complexities with regard to politics, religion, natural resources, employment, and health care. What ties all of these things together? If somebody gets money, you are correct. Everything costs money. Even something like religion, right? Faith-based religion. Oh, we got to build up a church. We got to build up a temple, hospital, medical types of things. Oh, we got to come up with a better system. We've got to build this. We got to build that. Someone created a narrative in terms of how things are going to be built. Somebody created a narrative in terms of what is under that dirt that's going to make us some money. Build up the community and all that good stuff. Somebody came up with a narrative when it came down to politics. We need to get our candidate in. We need to make sure that this group is going to work with us. We give them, they give us. But if they end up being an enemy, then, well, unfortunately, we're going to have to do some things. You see, we watched the narratives. We watched the Truman Show unfold. People born into the system didn't know that they were born into the system, didn't know that they were a byproduct of, didn't know that they were going to be experimented on. They didn't know that their voice was going to be used to teach various artificial intelligent devices. They didn't know that everything that they uploaded. Fun. It's great. It's wonderful. We got to create something so that everybody will be willing to put their information out there on the Internet. And if we do it in such a way where they benefit, guess what? Our tools are going to be smart. And what's happening is, is that these tools (laughs) are turning out to be smarter than the human beings that created them. And that narrative about the war between robots the war between human beings and robots, some of that already took place on a very, very small scale. And that didn't show up on the front page news where some laboratory experiments went haywire. But the news is out there. You dig for it and you'll find out this robot went rogue. This robot didn't work. This robot had a defect. This robot... (laughs) Went all out and attacked a group of scientists. When we look at these various systems, there will be those systems that will handle rejection. There will be those systems that will handle individuals who reject the systems, the processes, the connections, the network, the relationship. If you don't believe me, why don't you just take a look at what's already been done? You rejected artificial intelligence being brought into the workplace. Maybe not you, but somebody around you. In time, that person has to go. Someone will figure out, you know, This is an at-will company. We are moving forward. We are progressing while you are left out there still wanting what once was. You are hindering progress. We are not spending two to four hours doing what you guys have always done with, for instance, a CRM program, a customer relations management software program. Oh, we're talking about all types of rejection today. If you want just strictly family relationship, it's there on my channel. You can put that in a search engine, but we're talking about a variety of rejection. So what does that mean for all of these, dare we say it, old school, older people, or even the younger folks? I even ran some AI types of systems across my uh, 16 year old's desk, so to speak. And he was like, I don't like that. No, I don't think that's as good as what I can do. And I, uh, 
excuse me, I think it can do better. You better embrace this. Why are you going to try to do something off the top of your head when you can just simply research and see if it's already been done? And then if it's already been done, then you check your idea with another idea on top of another idea. And if that's already been done, then you know whether or not it's going to go over so well. It's like a cheat sheet, if you will, this artificial intelligence, because it can scrape the internet in record time that it would have took us two, three, four hours or more, maybe weeks to come up with something to put in a book or to put on an audio recording or to put in a database or to put in an Excel spreadsheet. And so there he is rejected. This older guy or this younger guy, this older girl or this younger woman or whoever. <laughs> I can't believe that my job is no longer going to be here. I mean, I never thought of anything else, but it's time for you to get some knowledge, some understanding where we're going, what we're doing. Working smarter, not harder. I'm looking at papers upon papers now. Papers that have never been typed. Papers that no system can be able to pick up unless, of course, I put a camera to them and then the system is going to write everything out for me. And those are out there. So for those of you all who you've been holding on a paper and more paper on top of paper, I suggest that you pull out that expensive phone and put that phone to work. That phone is not going to reject you like a human being that shows up and says, I'm not typing all of that. <laughs> Rejection. So not ready for the tools that are out there to help you. Still wanting to rely on people to come over to the house to sit down and write some checks. Lord Jesus. <laughs> I remember when I told one of my relatives, you need to stop that. But she doesn't want that. She wants me to come over and write some checks. Well, you know, check fraud is, is at the time of this message is real, real bad. And it's only getting worse. The U.S. Postal Service has been urging, commanding, wishing people would stop writing checks and putting them in envelopes. So that is one paper currency that they're working real hard sooner or later to get rid of all together. I worked in a uh, retail and uh, lo and behold, we still had customers, old school, of course, coming in with checks. And I was running a check in an old machine because I wondered, I said, wait a minute, why do they still have these machines from the 1980s? I remember when I was a little girl going shopping at Sears, Sears Roebuck back in the day, and I saw these big old machines, right? They were cash registers, very bulky, huge. And lo and behold, if I didn't get to work on one of those machines um, in 2021, and the ladies and gentlemen were showing up every now and again with checks, sticking them at the top and running them through. That's why that company was not switching to modern day modern day devices because people were still coming in with checks <laughs> and they weren't turning down money and it also made sense why some people did not stay with that company either because especially the younger people because they don't want to work on something old and archaic and it breaks down and the drawer you know closing the drawer and it's got its share of issues so I give you that example because some individuals are being rejected because they're old, like that machine. That's what's been said. It's not nice. I don't like the word old the way it, you know, the way some people say it in a mean spirited way. 
I don't like I back when I was younger I didn't like young either because the way people would say it in a mean spirited sort of way oh girl you're so young oh you still young <laughs> what you know oh you're old what do you know you, you know this sort of thing um excuse me but we know a lot and so God has this narrative for somebody no matter what the age is and it's an it's it's a narrative to get you once again out of rejection what do I do? I spend time in quiet, in stillness, in peace, seeking the Lord on what is the next step. A lot of topics covered here. The international, the national, the workplace, the relationships, the intimacy, the parenting, the political, the medical. Lord, I need to know from you, what is it that I need to prepare myself for? And that if I do face rejection in all its forms, in every category, keep my mind, O Heavenly Father, that I may not end up exacting revenge over petty feelings, over feelings of rejection. You see, the rejection is coming for so many. Every area of their life, they're going to experience rejection. They're going to experience rejection when it comes to the workplace. They're going to experience rejection when it comes to trying to get a driver's license. They're going to experience rejection when it comes to auditioning. They're going to experience rejection going overseas and finding out that your paperwork, you let it expire or this doesn't look like you, or you were supposed to bring this and instead you brought that. So no, we can't accept you. And what do people do when they don't get their way, especially when they're used to getting their way? They rebel, they get angry, they start wanting to go for weapons. And some of you all, God is gonna to speak to you and say, I don't want you leaving the house or I don't want you going here or going there because of what's out there. For some of you all, they have apps to let you know what's out there before you get out there. Some of you others, you're trained to defend. That is your calling, that is the narrative to help people out who can't handle feelings of rejection. And so, when I'm giving these messages of what is ahead, the person who's the problem solver, hears the problem and then creates a solution for that problem. The prophecy has gone forth. The woman said that there is this rejection coming for so many because of what? New laws coming into play, because of new systems and new processes at work, because of families at war in foreign lands as well as at home so what is the solution that I come up with what am I trained to do in order to calm the seas of rejection so the psychologist says well this is what I'm in the game for helping people out mentally you see someone else says oh well I know why I'm here I'm here to make sure that these individuals will accept this process at the workplace. And if they're not going to accept it, then my job is to hire people who will, you see. And someone in a marriage goes, I've experienced a lot of rejection. I've got to look at the root cause as to why my wife or my husband keeps rejecting me. There's a child who goes, well, I keep going to my mom and dad, asking them for this, asking them for that. And I got to figure out why it is that they keep rejecting me a lot of times I can tell you being a parent the reason why is because you've got a track record where your parents don't trust you <laughs> so that one is an easy one you see you got to be responsible with the little things in order for them to give you the bigger responsibilities and if you're not showing that you're responsible even at the workplace they're not going to promote you keep messing up, you see. So I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. 
Not ready yet. However, you do need some more training though. You might want to get certification before you apply for this job again, okay? You see? So as the rejection is coming, right? We are in that moment of peace, quiet, and stillness for preparation, for preparation. I'm hearing in the spiritual realm for the rejection, okay? We're not going to freak out. We're going to keep our mind. We know that, now get this, we know that there are those on the dark side who have created created systems processes to purge out, to reject certain people. So there's information out there for a certain business owner who's willing to jump through hoops to get that information to be a success that others are not privy to. See, they know that there's a certain mind that's willing to jump through hoops in order to be accepted, in order to get certain perks and benefits. So the system in all of its complications and headaches and whatever, for instance, for a business owner is that way on purpose because we only want a certain type of mindset for this industry or for this type of business. So before you freak out and you go, I just don't understand and I, maybe it's not meant for me. No, it's meant for you if you're still plugging away and you're still working hard at and you're still gaining knowledge. Oh, it's very much meant for you because you're willing to do all of the complexities you know, that that job requires. But there are those that they don't want in. And so the dark side is, is that, no, this isn't for everybody. This is just for a certain elite group. Because we want to have control over some individuals. And so therefore, no, this isn't for everyone. You see, controlled information. Once again, going back to Truman Show, he was in a controlled environment. It was an enormous dome. It was populated by crew members and actors who advertised products to Truman and the audience to generate revenue. The elaborate set allows Kristoff to control almost every aspect of Truman's life. And Kristoff is the show's creator and executive producer. Sounds a lot like reality, doesn't it? Mm. The elaborate set allows Kristoff to control almost every aspect of Truman's life, including the weather. To prevent Truman from discovering the truth, Kristoff orchestrates scenarios that curtail his desire for exploration, such as the death of his father in a sea storm to instill philosophobia. And constantly broadcast messages about the dangers of traveling and the virtues of staying home. Of course, so that he would not find out the truth. Now, uh, this uh, word, uh, philosophobia, is the persistent and intense fear of deep bodies of water, such as the sea, oceans, or lakes. Though very closely related... Philosophobia should not be confused with aquaphobia, which is classified as the fear of water itself. Stay with me. I am about to give you a home run as it relates to the dark side of rejection. Philosophobia can include fear of being in deep bodies of water, fear of the vast emptiness of the sea, of sea waves, aquatic creatures, and fear of distance from land. Every summer, we see a movie or movies that have bodies of water, okay? For some of you all, you're facing your fear for every time you're watching a movie with bodies of water so that you're more likely to take people who want to be in bodies of water who aren't fearful over to the theme park, right? Spend that money. It's a psychological motivation for some of you all others bodies of water has a darker aspect to it for some it serves as a warning of what is to come you might even dream of bodies of water for some of you all you may have been a part of processes systems and so forth that involved bodies of water for some of you all when you 
think of a vast sea, it might be triggering, especially if you were in a situation where you were out on a vast sea and there was a lot of issues, maybe on a cruise ship or what have you. When we're going through anything, and that's just an example, bodies of water, when we're going through anything or everything, where there is a fear of something. There is also a rejection when it comes to that fear rather than face it. So when you see truth in all its forms and God shows you based on what he wants you to have, workplace, relationships, all that, and you detect that there's rejection that is happening, a husband wants to lay down with his wife, for instance, and she says no. And she, and she keeps saying no. And she keeps saying no. He needs to get to the root cause as to why she does not want to lay with him. And it might be something simple. His breath sinks. He doesn't take baths. Eh, she's not attracted to what's up underneath the hood. He may not be attracted to what's up under, underneath the hood. The reason why he keeps rejecting her. Okay. So if you see that on a simplistic level. When God is showing you the truth about something, whether it's your fear or something else, don't reject it. Just because the world rejected you or just because somebody in the next room rejected you in a conversation does not mean that now I'm going to just reject everybody because I'm mad because I wasn't accepted because the truth that I spoke wasn't accepted. Because the teaching that I gave wasn't accepted. Because of that job that I interviewed for wasn't accepted. Can I tell you that the Lord made sure that there were so many different areas of my life. That he called my mind to remembrance where I was rejected. To bring me to this point to give you a message like this. To say that it's okay. It's okay to be rejected. Absolutely it is. Because in that rejection we learn, we grow, and we know what to do and what not to do. We know what's a part of the narrative and what's not a part of the narrative that we sought God on. Because it, was, it wasn't enough to already go through so much being born into this world, being fed a narrative that our parents gave us, parental programming, which I've discussed time and time again on this channel. It wasn't enough to have the workplace programming and the college programming and all these different television programming, radio programming, all of these different programs. But somebody gets to a point and says, I will not allow another day to go by that I'm not seeking God on what his will is for my life. And the day that you get that revelation and you've accepted God into your life and not rejected him is the day I kid you not that there's a shift in the atmosphere and suddenly everything that you were rejected on means nothing to you any longer. And instead you look forward to the days of acceptance. Hallelujah. Somebody is going to be accepted by a husband, by a wife. If this relationship doesn't work or what have you, it doesn't go to distance any longer. No biggie, because I guarantee you that nine times out of 10, you ran into the arms of that person because somebody before that person had rejected you or you rejected somebody, felt bad about it, and then you <laughs> wanted to fulfill the void. If you were rejected when it came down to the workplaces, what have you, as you walk with the one true God, God says, I know the desires of your heart. Hang on. There is a workplace that's going to accept you. If you are so tired and frustrated about this one and that one saying no to you, walk with the Lord and he will set it up for somebody to say yes. I couldn't speak this way in this type of confidence if it hadn't been for what I had gone through. Since having this channel, before having this channel, and long after. Embrace the one true God and he will embrace you. Get into the word of the Lord and get some understanding as to who he is. I make it easy for you. 
I make it easy because there's so much scripture on his channel that you can listen to. But you can do it. You can do it. God wants to hear from you. It starts through prayer. People open up all sorts of portals for the demonic, don't they? Why can't they sit quiet in peace and stillness and allow the Lord to enter in? This is your moment. We're casting away rejection right now in the name of Jesus. We're casting away the feelings of rejection rejection and resentment and ill feelings and wanting to exact revenge on that one who told you no at the office or that one in the next room who told you no maybe she and hallelujah and those feelings that individuals have on an international and national scale where they're waging war we're asking that the lord meet people in boardrooms meet people over the phone Meet people through emails who are in leadership roles who can stop verbal, physical, spiritual, sexual wars, people battling all shapes, colors, and sizes, people battling because the root cause, oh, psychologist, doctor, teacher, president, counselor was rejection. A young boy fighting everybody at a camp. Because what people didn't know was that a mom had rejected him. A dad had rejected him. A holiday season had just passed. It wasn't enough that he had to deal with the Mother's Day. But then he had to turn around and deal with the Father's Day. And so everybody is paying a price. Because he can't handle his emotions. Because nobody heard him when he said she didn't or he didn't. When you hear somebody say somebody didn't do something for them, that's rejection. And if they can't handle the emotions that come with not being received, not being accepted, Somebody who is mentally fragile will lose it. And then, of course, we all experience the dark side. If we're in that public place where the screaming and the yelling and the throwing things or God forbid they go get a weapon. Pray, pray like never before. Seasons like this always stir up all sorts of issues. I pray in Jesus mighty name for those of you all who have experienced your share of losses as a result of someone. Simply put, was dealing with rejection. Some group felt slighted, didn't like the fact that their favorite rejected them, that they didn't want to participate in a project or help out. And so what some of these dark groups do is they sacrifice. And unfortunately, there are those who go through extreme distress because of it. All I said was no. Yeah, but see, you got involved with a group that they don't take no for an answer. People who have been a part of gangs know this all too well. People who knew people who were a part of gangs know this. Because to say no means other people are going to say no as well. And we don't want that. So we got to make an example. And that's the thing that people do. Cult groups do this sort of thing. Well, we can't make it easy for you to leave this group. So all I did was say no. Yeah, you said no. Right. So I can just leave. Mm, It won't be that easy. See, you got a lot from us. And so it's this sort of thing that is the disturbing, that is the dark, and all that comes with it. So we ask that the Lord put his angels of protection around those individuals 
who have reached out to him and have asked for his assistance and have decided that they want to be on the side of light rather than the side of darkness. Can I tell you, though, that rejection doesn't come without consequence, depending on what you signed, who you got yourself mixed up with. God isn't a genie God. You don't, you know, ask three wishes and then suddenly everything happens. There is a certain degree of letting go of that old life that has to take place in order for the new life, the new creature in Christ that you are to show up. And so you ask God for direction, for guidance. You give your life over to him. And that means that you'll have to do some rejecting. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in a mentor prize seven. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving and thank you. Blessings to you.